He's a song. Amen. Amen. We just put music to it. That's all. Song check. Did we do it? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I love song. I, I was singing. In fact, that's how I learned the word. Just sing it. You know, but let's let's get started tonight. This will be on uh, social media. And uh, evidently, we have we have hit a nerve because of a, a chord because I had a pastor uh, in Texas reach out to me and said, Pastor, when you get done, I sure would like to have those notes. And I said, absolutely, you know, because he wanted to teach this in his church about the season. Because I know everybody's going through seasons. Amen. Amen. You, you, you may not understand which one you're in, but you might know. Uh, but it's very important that we understand what spiritual season we're in. Turn me up a little bit, please. We understand what spiritual season we're in. And then you'll know how to get through it. You'll know how to survive it. Amen. Tell me up, please. You'll know how to survive it and get through it. So I started this series last week on understanding our spiritual season and, and how to get through them. Amen. Uh, let's take the announcements off, please. Amen. Understanding your spiritual season and how to get through them. And I, I want to start with our foundational scripture. So, Pastor, how do you know there's spiritual seasons? Because I promise you, if there's, if there's seasons in the natural, mm -hmm. there's seasons in the spirit. Amen. And we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 46. This is going to be our foundational scripture. 1 Corinthians 15 and 46, talking about what happens in the natural, uh, but also happens in the spiritual. But first, everything happens in the natural. Then there's a spiritual correlation to what happened in the natural. You got born in the natural. Amen. Some of us who were born at the time when the doctor spanked us, now they don't do that much anymore. But you come in this world hollering and screaming. You ever, you ever wonder why baby come in this world hollering and screaming? Because they just left the safe environment. Now they're in a whole new environment. They come hollering and screaming. But that was a natural birth. But how many know that's a spiritual birth? You got to be born again. Amen. 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 Somebody told me the other day, well, Pastor, I was born this way. I said, I got good news for you. You can be born again. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. So, there's a spiritual, but the, the, but the natural happens first. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 46. He said, how be it? That was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. So we're talking about what happens in the natural also happens in the spiritual. If you've got a natural dry season, how many of you have droughts in Oklahoma? If you've got a natural dry season, you've got a spiritual dry season. And that's what we talked about last week. Going through the dry seasons. How many of you been through a dry season? Amen. 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 It's not. It's not that you don't love God. It's not that you necessarily do anything wrong. It's just God seems distant. Mm -hmm. It don't seem like He's talking. It don't seem like He's He's near you. Even though we read a scripture in the Book of Acts last week, He's not far from any one of us. But sometimes you go through dry seasons. And God, where you at? Mm -hmm. Amen. I guess I'm gonna talk to you. Amen. God, where you at? You know. Amen. If I'm the only one, then I guess I'm strange. Because sometimes I've gone through seasons. I say, God, I know you said in your word that you would never leave me nor forsake me. But it seems like you have gone to California or something. Amen. You have moved. You know? But we know God has to move. And we dealt with that. And you, can, you can check that out online. Uh, and also, I believe we have a CD of that. Uh, Are you in a dry season? That was last week. So today, or tonight rather, we're going to continue our series on are you in a waiting season, waiting for something season. And this is a season where you just got to wait. And I want you to say something about God. Uh, if you're going to get anything from God, it always requires waiting. Yes, Amen. Yeah. So Amen. we're going to talk about tonight learning how to wait yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just because you wait, that don't mean you're waiting well. Right. Uh -huh. right. But there is a way to learn how to wait well. Learn how to wait patiently. Learn how to wait in contentment. And this is something God had to me because I want it now. It's my money. I want it now. <laughs> Y'all see that commercial? Amen. <laughs> so God had to teach me how to wait. So tonight we're talking about the waiting season, but as the series goes on, we're going to talk about the busy season. There were, you have, have a lot of activity going on, but you ain't getting nothing done for the Lord. We're talking about the test and trial season. There's a season where there's a test and trial on every hand. Somebody can turn around, there's something else. There's a season for that. Then we're going to talk about spiritual warfare season. There's a season where you got to fight 
for the promises of God over your life. We're not going to be fighting people. I'm not going to be fighting Monica. I'm not gonna, we don't fight people. I fight her not with people. I just use her name. She ain't fighting me, though. Okay. But we don't fight people. Too much, we spend too much time fighting against people. <laughs> Instead of... How many know the only fight we're called to, to, to fight? The fight of faith. That's the only one. The fight of faith. That's the fight because nothing works without faith. Your love don't work. Your faith works about love. If you don't walk in love, your faith ain't going to work. So then we have the joyful season. Seem like everything is, is coming up roses. Everything's going right. And I mean, no, that's the season you really, you, you, you ought to embrace and get all you can. Because another season is coming. So, brothers and sisters, I, I'm going to list just these, but there are multiple seasons. Many seasons. Uh, just like there are seasons for the, the, the climate, there's, there's dry seasons, there's financial seasons, there, there are seasons of lack, there's seasons of abundance. There are many seasons. But I want to help you to understand how to locate where you are right now. And uh, so we talked about the dry season, so I won't go over that too much. So, but now we're going to talk about the waiting for something season. How many ever waiting for something? Amen. Amen. We sing that song, I know my way. Yeah. I know my way. But sometimes waiting can be frustrating. Yeah. Right. Right. Amen. If you don't know what you're waiting for. Right. You ever met say, I'm just waiting on something. I don't know what it is. I'm, I, I'm waiting on something. Well, what you waiting on? I don't know, but I'm waiting. You know. So let me start off right here about the waiting season. I'm going to start this off right here. That the waiting season is not easy. It's not easy. If you are there right now, you know what I'm talking about. But be encouraged because the waiting season is a fruitful season. And the Word of God is full of the scriptures telling us how to wait, how long to wait, when we should wait. The Word of God is full of scriptures. I'm going to just give you a few just to demonstrate how many scriptures there are on waiting. Yeah. Waiting on God, waiting for your, your turn to come. Uh, it may be your, your time, but it just wasn't your turn. Yes. How many of you say what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We've got to wait in line for our turn. Right. So, you don't have to turn to these scriptures, so I'm going to give you quite a few, but I, uh, I want you to write them down if you can. Psalm 37 and 7 says, Be still in the presence of the Lord mm -hmm. and wait patiently for Him to act. Mm -hmm. Wait patiently for the Lord to move. That is the kicker right there, being patient. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm telling you, patience is, is, is still a struggle for me, but I'm learning. And here's the thing I want you to never do. Don't ever pray for ask God to give you patience. Don't do that. Say, Pastor, why not? Because the Bible says the trial of your faith work your patience. So you keep asking God, give me patience. Get ready for the trials. Because that's the only way it's going to come. And say, why am I having all these trials? Did you ask me for patience? And when you ask for patience, get ready to wait in line longer. Get wait, ready for people to act ugly. Because you're going to have to learn how to wait patiently. Amen. <laughs> Listen. Whether you're waiting for a godly husband or a godly wife, whether you're waiting for a difficult circumstance to change, listen, always wait for a godly man. Don't wait for a good one. Because I've seen some good dudes go bad. <laughs> and I've seen some good sisters go bad. But I ain't never seen a godly one go back. So don't ask God, God, give me a good man. No, baby. Ask God to give you a godly man. God, give me a good woman. God, give me a godly woman. That's just a side note. That wasn't in my notes. Amen. Listen to this. What are you waiting for? It's a difficult circumstance to change. You're waiting. You're waiting for God to finally fulfill the promise that he made to you. You're waiting. You're waiting for your season uh, uh, to change from, and, and sometimes when you're waiting, it can be mildly, mildly annoying, or it can be incredibly frustrating. I've waited, and, I'm, and there's some things I'm still waiting, but I'm learning out how to wait well. There's a waiting well. Then there's a waiting frustrated. How many of you can tell when a person is frustrated? 
They're waiting, but the fast yeah. So listen, write these scriptures down. I'm gonna give you, just show you just there are many. I just showed some that, that spoke to me, and I pray it speaks to you. Uh, Psalm 27 and 14. It says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I used to preach that one. Wait, I say, on the Lord. <laughs> Isaiah 40 and 31. Hallelujah. Well, before I'm going to further, anybody waiting on something right now? Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Lord. All right, I want to make sure I'm talking to the right people. Yeah. Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord yes. shall renew their strength, yes. and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Yes. They shall run and not be weary, mm. and they shall walk not and not faint. You ain't going to pass out while you wait. <laughs> But you gotta wait. Yeah. One thing I'm gonna tell you, if you're gonna get anything from God, yeah. you are going to wait. Yeah. And we're gonna talk about why does God make us wait? There's a reason for that. He makes us wait for a reason. Yeah. We're waiting right now on some things, and I prayed, I said, God, why are you making us wait? And he began to show me the, some of the reasons why he's making us wait, and now I'm waiting patiently, I'm rejoicing while I'm waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 37, verses seven, through nine. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Friend not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who prospers, bringing wicked devices to pass. God's going to deal with it. He said, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and don't worry about those that are prospering while you wait. Because yeah. how, how many know that there's some folk you know doing all sorts of evil and it seems like they're just getting by yeah. and prospering yeah. and doing well and here you're living right and you walk in line upon line, preacher upon preacher, principle and God and seem like you have to wait when everything seems to come quickly to them. Yeah. Don't worry about that because the Bible tells us don't worry about those that prosper in their wickedness. Let's look at this. Go, go to verse 8 for me, please. I said that since you got it up there. Go to verse 8. Thank you. And Psalm 37, verse 8. Cease from anger mm -hmm. and the same wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Amen. I mean, sometimes when you're waiting, make them all do something. <laughs> Cease from anger. You know, you put a D in front of anger, what you get? Danger. <laughs> uh, glory to God. Go to verse, verse 9, please. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Yeah. If we wait. Evildoers will be cut yeah. off. That's good. That's good. If we wait, we're going to have to inherit every promise God said we can have. Amen. Psalms 130, verse 5. Psalm 130, verse 5. It says, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And in his word do I hope. Listen, while you wait, you've got to get in the word. Well, you know, waiting is not just sitting around passively. Waiting is being active in the things of God. And you, you get so caught up, and this is, boy, this is like, it, it never fails. You get so caught up doing what God told you to do, you forget what you're waiting on, and then all of a sudden, it's there. Yes. And it could have been five years, but you were so caught up in God, what you're waiting on finally shows up, and, and it catches you by surprise. That's right. yeah. I think if you're waiting on a mate, or you're waiting on this or that, you ought to be presently surprised. When it come, because you were so occupied with God that it, it just snuck up on you. Right. Amen. I just ever said, I, I, I forgot all about that. Here it comes. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I forgot all about my boo, and now my boo is here. Uh -huh. wow. Because you were occupied right. with God. Wow. Then God kept you on your shoulder. <laughs> well, we aren't talking about who needs to be alone. We aren't talking about that. Well. <laughs> I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word. So while you're waiting, stay in the word. Y'all hear me up there? Amen. Stay in the word. Yeah. Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 
chapter 2, verse 3. Some people call it Habakkuk. I call it the Italian prophet Habakkuk. <laughs> chapter 2, verse 3. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. God has a time to bring forth your, what you're waiting on. Yes. For the vision is for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Yes. And not mine. Though it tarry, wait for it, baby. Wait, wait. I put the baby in there. That's, <laughs> that's our King James. That's, that's uh, Oak Cliff. Praise God. Oh, wait for it, baby. <laughs> because it will surely come and will not tarry. When it comes, it won't wait. It can't wait. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you've been waiting. You've been sharing the word of God. And it seemed like blessings are overtaking you from every side. And people say, why all of a sudden they just come in you? They don't know how long you waited. <laughs> And it seems like from the left and the right and the front and the back, from above, from beneath, blessings are overtaking you, but you waited. Yes. Yes. People don't know what you're waiting on. They don't know how long you waited. Yes. And then when you possess it, some of them got the nerve to get jealous. All right. Why, why he? Why, you don't know how long. You don't know how long. God knows. Look at Psalm 40, verse 1 through 3. Let's go there for me, please. Turn to Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. And let's look and see what it says. Hallelujah. Psalm 40, 1 through 3. Glory to God. Expectation is from him. Yes, sir. 
I ain't expecting nothing from no. I'm not looking for nobody to give me nothing. God got everything I need, but He will use people. You hear me? He'll use people to get it to you, but it comes from God. I like what Abraham said when Abraham went to rescue uh, his servants and rescue uh, those people that had taken his servants captive, and he went with some other kings, and they routed these kings, and they had all kind of treasure and everything, and they told Abraham, listen, take what you need, take whatever you need, and, and treasure, gold, silver, whatever. Abraham said, I don't want nothing from you, maybe some food for my servant, because I don't want anybody to say they made Abraham rich, but God. Yes. Abraham left all the treasure, left all the silver. He said, I don't want nobody to say they made Abraham rich, but God. And I know Abraham was plenty rich. Yes. Abraham had plenty. Plenty of it. I don't want nobody to say they made me rich. I don't want nobody to say they blessed me. I don't want nobody to be able to say it. He may have used you, but my blessing came from God. Yes. Amen. Oh Isaiah 8 and 17. Glory to God. Isaiah 8 and 17. It says, and I will wait upon the Lord that hide. Listen, listen. I will wait upon the Lord that hided his face from the house of Jacob and I will look for him. Brothers, so sometimes it seems like God will hide his face so that we will search it out. Yeah. And learn how to wait. Say, God, I know you're doing something in this season. I'm waiting. But God, I know you're not, I know you haven't left me. I know you haven't forsaken me. But I'm going to wait. And while you're waiting, keep doing what God told you to do before anything happens. Yes, sir. Jesus said, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? Mm -hmm. Keep doing what God told you to do. Sometimes people stop doing what God told them to do because they're not seeing the results they wanted to see. Mm -hmm. Keep doing it. That's what waiting on God is. Keep doing what God told you to do and keep doing it until God brings the manifestation. Amen. Amen. God told you to do something, keep doing it. Amen. Amen. Now listen. I gave you those scriptures, and that's just a handful. The Bible is full of scriptures talking about waiting on God, waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord to move. But listen, how many remember the story of Joseph? When Joseph told the dream to his brothers. Yes. <laughs> That's why you can't tell everybody, you yes, know. Yes, Everybody's not going to be excited for you. Amen. You tell me what God is doing. Q showing me what God is doing in his life and his business. I'm excited. Amen. You know, and, and I heard a man say this other day, and it makes so much sense. If God is blessing somebody on your road, yes. you ought to get excited. You know what? Oh, that means he's in the air. Amen. Amen. I heard somebody say one time, if God is blessing your neighbor, yes. you ought to get excited because God is in your neighborhood. Yes. Amen? Yes. And if it's in your neighborhood, then he bless you too. Yes. So, but, but Joseph told the story and, and his dream and his brother sold him into a pit. Mm. And, and God used the waiting season in Joseph's life for his glory and for Joseph's good. Mm -hmm. Joseph went from the pit to Pharaoh's palace, Amen. but he had to wait. And in between, there was a lot of steps and a lot of changes that that man went through because he refused to mess with Miss Ugly Old Miss Potiphar. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to mess with Ugly Potiphar's wife. I'm not going to do it. The Bible said day after day, she would say, lie with me, Joseph. Lie with me, Joseph. Joseph said, I can't do this, man. I can't dishonor my God. Lie with me, Joseph. I guess Joseph was a good looking fellow. She said, I can't take this no more. She just grabbed his clothes and he ran. Love the Lord. And Joseph got thrown in prison. Mm. Yeah. After he was sold to Potiphar, God blessed Potiphar's house. Potiphar didn't even know what he had in his house. He had so much stuff. God blessed Potiphar because of Joseph. And let me tell you something. You get the right person in your life. God will bless you because you just hang around there. Right. God blessed Potiphar. And Potiphar was an Egyptian heathen. God blessed him for Joseph's sake. Mm -hmm. The Bible said Potiphar didn't even know what he had in his house. Mm -hmm. He trusted everything to Joseph. Mm -hmm. But after Mrs. Potiphar lied on him, mm -hmm. sold him into prison. God blessed Joseph in prison because he would say, God, I'm waiting on the manifestation that you show me. Just because God shows you a, a vision, don't mean you ain't going to go through some hell to get to it. Come on. The devil don't want you to have it. Can you say hell in church? Yes, can. Yes, you can. Well, you just did. Well, you ought to be able to say hell in church. Using 
the right context. <laughs> all right, all right. So listen, Joseph went from the pit to Pharaoh's palace, and because he waited on God, listen, you may feel like you're in a pit right now. A pit of sadness, a pit of loneliness, a pit of sickness, or a pit of lack, or whatever you put in there. Whatever your pit is of waiting, let me promise you this. At the end of your pit, there's a palace for you. I promise you that. Whatever you're waiting on, at the end of your pit, baby, there is a palace for you. If you learn how to wait. We remember Abraham. See, Abraham, that's my man, boy. Abraham. I want to see, there's the first thing I want to see when I get to heaven. Of course, the first of all, I want to see the Lord Jesus. I want to see the Father. I want to see all the, I want to see, but the next thing is I want to see my mama, my daddy, my sister, my brothers. I want to see them. And, and then I want, where's Abraham? Because I can pick Abraham, the big old barrel chested dude, you know? I said, where's Abraham? I want to see Abraham. Because Abraham was, he was a man of God. He believed in God, but Abraham do just like he did just like us. Sometimes we get a hell go. And Abraham got a hell go. And I'll tell you how. God promised him a son. God said, a son is going to come out of your voice. I'm going to promise you a son. And Abraham was waiting on the son, and, and Sarai could not conceive, and Sarai could not have a child, and Sarai, before he was Abraham, he was Abram. And this is news for you. I, I got to preach this again. When God gets in the middle of your name, yeah. you will produce. Yeah. Because when a Abram was Abram, he was called exalted father, but not father of many nations. When Sarai, before she was Sarah, she was Sarai, it means exalted mother. But God told him, I'm going to give you a son, but I got to change your name first. Yeah. And for, for, before God can get anything to you, he's got to change your confession. Yeah. Who you say you are. Abraham was, Abraham was going around saying, my name is Exalted Father, but he didn't have no kids. But the moment God told him, no longer are you Abraham, you are Abraham. He began to tell everybody, I'm Abraham. That means I'm a father of many nations. And as he began to confess the word, life and strength came to his body. One day, he had 100 years old. Miss Sarah was walking through the tent. Life came to Abraham. Sarah was, her womb was dead, but when she changed the name from Sarah to Sarah, and she's an exalted mother, how I many know it began to change her body? Amen. Amen. When you learn to confess and speak what God tells you, it will change your physical body. And both of them, their bodies came alive, and Abraham saw Sarah walk, Sarah walk through the tent, and all he said was, hey! The rest is history. But before that, Abraham got ahead of God. He was waiting on the promised son. He was waiting on Isaac. And he was waiting a long time. And, and here's a word of caution for you. Why are you waiting? Okay? Here's a word of caution. While you're waiting on God, don't get impatient like Abraham did and create an Ishmael. Ooh, that's it. That's real good. I'll tell you, because sometimes it seems like God's promises are taken too long and we get ahead of God and we try to do it ourselves and we create an Ishmael and you will fight that Ishmael the rest of your days and your your lineage your life age will have to fight that Ishmael that you made the rest of your days because that's what they're doing in Israel right now they're fighting Ishmael the Muslim nations came out of Ishmael and Abraham he created an Ishmael because he got ahead of God and he listened to this woman Hagar and, and, and he listened to his wife and said, well, maybe God's going to bring the promise through her. God said, I didn't tell you I was bring the promise through her. I said, I'm going to bring the promise through Sarah. And guess what happened when we get ahead of God? We create Ishmael's that you will contend with the rest of your life. Listen, I've got ahead of God on some things and let me tell you something. I'm dealing with some Ishmael's in my life. My, of my own doing. And let me share this with you right here. How many know God forgives sin? Yeah. Yeah. He does not forgive consequences. Right, right. Amen. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. God forgives sin. 
but he does not forgive consequences. Amen. If you sin, God forgives, but that sin comes with consequences that God will not forgive. Baby, you just got to deal with it. Young man came to me years ago, messed with every little girl in town and got nine of them pregnant. And he came to me and said, Pastor, I need forgiveness. I said, okay, for what? He said, I got all these girls pregnant and, and will you ask God to make it go away? He said, pray for me, Pastor. Tell God to make it go away. You know what I did? I laid my hands on him. I said, let me pray for you. God give him nine good jobs. In the name of Jesus. I said, because if everything goes the way it's going, you're going to have nine babies that you got to take care of. He said, God's not going to forgive you. Yes, God gives you for that, the fornication. But God not going to forgive you. And God's going to forgive the consequences. Baby, you're going to have some kids coming. You can pray to the cows come home. He is not going to relieve you of those consequences. And how many know, if we're honest, some of us are dealing with Ishmael's that we made. Come on. And you can't blame God. We made it because we got ahead of God. And God said, well, deal with it, baby. I'll, I'll give you strength. I'll walk you through it. I'll, I'll give you the big trip. You know, because uh, children of Israel are fighting. Muslim nations are surrounded on every side. And every last one of them comes from Ishmael. So if you fight something, that you made, God will give you strength to fight, yeah. but he's not going to take away your consequence. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. That's the word caution. Don't get ahead of God and make an Ishmael. Ishmael's are a result of trying to bring to pass the promises of God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. I have to say that again. Okay. Yeah. Ishmael's are a result of trying to bring to pass the promises of God in the flesh. Trying to help God out. How many of us trying to help God out? God always has to remind us, baby, I'm God. I don't need no help. I tried to help God out in many occasions. How many? See, I like, I like to hear what Sister Linda said about how God had to help to, to, to take care of that debt. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we get hit with something. Yeah. And instead of us seeking God, we go out and get four or five more jobs. Well, then we don't have time for church. Yeah. We don't have time for God. We don't have time for anything. Instead of seeking God and asking Him to give you instructions, mm -hmm. God can do things when you ask Him yeah. that your, 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 your work in the flesh cannot accommodate. Yeah. I ain't saying no work. Thank you, brothers. Y'all know how I feel about that. Talk Brother got work. Amen. 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 Young lady, you come tell me you, you like a young man, first thing, he, he know God, he got to pray to God, he got work. He ain't got none of them, he ain't the one. Praise Amen. God. He, you got to have a work. You can't find no work. Uh, somebody give you some work. Go. <laughs> okay, listen, let me get, let me get to it because I, I got to finish up here. In your season of waiting, trust that God is pruning you. He's chiseling away what's not needed for the, your next season. If God is chiseling stuff away from you, you don't need it in the season you're going in next. Amen. It will become a weight. It will become cumbersome. So you got to trust that God is pruning you. God is chiseling you. He's making you ready. So let it work no matter how long it takes. Amen. Sometimes seasons are long, baby. Some of us are waiting on some stuff for our kids. And, and we're waiting. But while we're waiting, you may not know, God is whispering in that child's ear. Or God is preparing someone to minister to that child that may not even have been born yet. Amen. See, God don't think the way we do. God does not think in time the way we do. God thinks in purpose and principles. Mm -hmm. And God may have somebody getting ready to be born that's going to witness to your child when they're 12 years old. Yeah. Yeah. God does not think the way we do. No, he does not. My brother, all my siblings are saved now. I have 16 siblings. I'm the last one. And I've had some go on, go on glory. 
But all of them are saved now. All of them. The last one to come in, the last rabble, was my brother who wouldn't listen to nobody. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed until all of God sent somebody that he would listen to. And he gave his heart to the Lord. But it took years. I mean years. It took, what, 40 years? <laughs> Praying 40 years of seeking God? 40 years? But God was working that thing out. And the per person that mentioned him wasn't even born. But yet, God don't think the way we do. God will raise somebody up to bring your blessing. Listen to this. All right. Y'all with me? Let's have this question right here. And then, then, then I'm, I'm going to go uh, get me a, a sandwich, praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's ask this question right here. Why does God make me wait? Anybody have an answer? He know, he know you need it. He know you want it. Why does he make you wait for it? Let's see. We, well, amen. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can answer this. In this season of waiting, where you are right now, like other seasons, this one will one day be over. That's good news. Amen. It's going to one day be over. But a time of waiting, let me, let me just 100% guarantee you something. As long as you're in this Christian walk, I guarantee you, you will have seasons of waiting the rest of your life. Yeah. It's just how God works. You are going to wait. And it's going to happen again. If you're in the season right now, once it's over, there will be a time when this season will come again. If you're going to receive anything from God, you will go this season the rest of your life. That's one reason that there are so many scriptures talking about waiting, teaching us how to wait, because it's a part of God's plan. Amen. You're going to wait. You see, for, for God, the goal of this season is not that we should learn our lesson. So y'all don't think the way we're doing something. How I many know oh, human parents, if they tell you they're going to do something for you and you disobey, what they say? I'm going to do it, but you're going to wait now. We work on last week, but we ain't going on. We work on next week. We ain't going for a month now. That's how human parents this way. God don't do that. God does not make us wait so we will learn a lesson. God makes us wait so we can learn how to wait. He's not trying to teach us anything while we're waiting, except to teach us how to wait, and not just wait, but to wait well. Amen. See, don't tell me you're waiting well when you're fussing and cussing and moaning and groaning and murmuring because you're having to wait. That's not waiting well. You're waiting, but you ain't waiting well. When you're waiting well, you say, I'm going to learn how to wait, and I'm going to wait till my change comes. And Father, while I'm waiting, what can I do for you? What can I do for you while I'm waiting? Because while you say, God, what can I do for you? God is going to give you so many things to keep you acting for him that you forget that you wait. Some of us are waiting on, and now listen, I know I'm, I'm married, so y'all have to take what I say with a little grain of salt, but some folks are waiting on a man so much that's all they're thinking about. Well, right. Some folks are waiting on a woman so much that's all they're thinking about, and they can't even serve God the right way because they're waiting on my Boaz to come. Well, right. But if you do a group to get in that field you better talk about and start gleaning, the boy's going to come riding up on you while you're waiting. Yes, yes. <laughs> If you get so occupied with God, He will do with three, with you what He did with Adam and say, "That person's lonely. Let me prepare help me for them." So listen, learning how to wait well, even in waiting, if your waiting continues a long time, many people are waiting, but they are not waiting well. They're murmuring, they're complaining instead of waiting by serving God. Listen, why does God make me wait? So that you can learn how to wait. Because how many will tell the truth? Some of the stuff you got impatient on, you thought you had to have, you wish to God you can give it back. <laughs> some stuff you just had to have. Got to have. Got to have it now. Oh, God said, baby, wait, I got something better. Now, got to have it now. And now, once you get it, now you, you ask God, take it back. Take it back, dear 
Gossip interview just waited. Uh -huh. You could have had the best. That is true. <laughs> Listen, while I'm waiting, it is always my plan is to have a good attitude and show God that I am a good student. But waiting is not to teach you anything but learning how to wait. So God will, see, a lot of people say, God, I'm going to show you that I'm a good student, and I'm going to learn to wait, and I'm going to wait patiently so you can stop, and you can bring my waiting to an end. That's not God's purpose. God's purpose is not to bring your waiting to an end. God's purpose is, is even better than that. God wants to give you himself while you're waiting. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people say, God, okay, I'm going to learn how to wait so my waiting will end. No, that's not the purpose. You learn how to wait so you can learn how to wait well. And while you're waiting well, then you don't care how long it takes. Because, you know, when it does come, it's not going to tarry. And it's going to be the best it can ever Amen. be. Amen. Learn how to wait well. Leave it. Listen to this. God is not as interested in bringing your waiting to a close as he is that you learn how to wait and do it patiently. Rather than in my waiting, he wants to bless my waiting. Yes. And I'm here to tell you, there is a blessed waiting. There is a blessed waiting. You, you ever meet people that are waiting on God, but it's a blessed waiting. Amen. They're not in a hurry. Amen. They're not frustrated. They're not murmuring. They're not complaining. They're just waiting on God because they know God is faithful to his promise yes. and he's going to come through, but they're just waiting and there's a blessed waiting. Yes. That's what God wants to teach us, how to have a blessed waiting. How to wait well on God. Because here's the thing, you might as well wait well because you're going to wait. <laughs> you might as well do it well because waiting is a part of the process. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever got anything from God that didn't wait on God. And, and, and God's not doing it to be mean. Sometimes it don't have anything to do with you. Sometimes it has to do with the people around you. They ain't hearing God yet. Amen. God may have spoken to them to release something to you. They are not listening yet, so God has to keep tenderizing that heart. And sometimes, sometimes I know it takes a long time. Amen. Because God is not going to force anybody to do anything, but he always gently suggests. Yes. Amen. God tenderizes that heart. And I've never had a tough piece of me. you got to leave that thing in the marinade a long time. Amen. And sometimes God will tenderize people's hearts to the point where it's, you know what, I need to bless that person with this. And it may have taken years. So sometimes God is working behind the scene on others while you're waiting, and you learn how to wait well and, and have a blessed waiting. God can work on other people, and God can work on decision makers, and God can work on people that have what you need in order to bless it to you, but sometimes you've got to wait for God to finish his work. Amen. 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 That's right. Learn how to wait. Amen. So let's close with this right here. Keep faith in God. While you wait, Amen. don't doubt. Don't doubt that God has a plan. God has a purpose. Don't doubt God's goodness. And wait expectancy. Yes. Expectantly on God. Wait with some expectancy. God, I don't know when. I don't know how. But I know it's coming. Amen. And really, you really don't care how or when when you know God's going to do it. Yes. I don't care if God come down on the carpet, May. Reno, I don't care how you come. I don't care how you give it to you when you come. I don't care. I don't care who you're going to bring my blessing. I don't care who you're going to bring my blessing to. I mean, true, I don't care. A lot of people are picky who God uses. I don't care. Amen. If you got what I need, yeah. and God's going to be able to do it for you, yeah. I can't believe that, you know, he, he took that from that person. That person had what I need. And God moved on their heart. The Bible is full. The Bible is full of God using people that weren't even saved to bless his people. God will move on people. The Bible says that give and it shall be given. Good measure. Come on, finish. Press And running over shall who? Men. It doesn't just say same men. It says men. Give him your bosom. Yeah. Amen. There's a man in the, in, the, in the Bible, a Roman, that wasn't a believer, but he wanted to build the Jews a temple. He wanted to build a synagogue. And 
some of them were complaining. And some of them came to the Lord because he, he needed a miracle. And some of them said, Lord, he built, a, he, he built us a temple. He's good to us. And he wasn't even believing. And the Lord gave him a miracle. But this man blessed the Jews and built up a temple. And he wasn't even believing because God moved on his heart. God can move on anything. Right. Right. And I'm not particular. There's some boundaries, there's some boundaries now, but I mean, you can't prejudge how God's going to get your blessings. Oh, Y'all yeah. yeah. be surprised some of the money people drop through that mail slot and never step a foot in this door. But they know the principle of tithing. Yeah. Yeah. They know to give to God. Yeah. I caught one of them one time. I said, who is this person keep giving this money? And one time I waited around, I caught him dropping it out of the door. I said, you don't come to, I, I don't want to know about the church, but I do know mm -hmm. the law of the and I know God's word. I know if I give, God's going to give. I said, if you go to church, you know, sir, I don't. But I'm faithful with my tithe. And he said, I ain't never broke. <laughs> so you know what I told him? I didn't know. I didn't tell him, well, you keep that money since you ain't going to church. Are you crazy? I said, let the Lord use it. So listen, keep the faith, don't doubt God's plan and His goodness, and wait with some expectancy. Amen. Psalm 5 and 3, David cried out, he said, each morning, I bring my request to you, and I wait patiently. God is listening and knows exactly where you are. Hang in there. God has not forgotten you. In this waiting season, God has not forgotten you. But learn how to wait well, the Lord. Amen. Come on, stand your feet. Hallelujah. Lord, help us to wait well. Amen. Hallelujah. Waiting in your presence, Lord. Serving you. Help us today. Next week, we're going to be talking about the busy season. We discussed the dry season, the waiting for something season. Next week, the busy season. But tonight, Lord, help us to wait well. If right now you're waiting on God to do something, to move, wait well on the Lord. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Be grateful. That God has moved in the past. If you don't have anything to, to be grateful for, listen. Remember what He's done for you already. Say, God, I remember the time that I waited and you came through. You're going to do it in anyway. The Bible says, wait with expectancy. And my expectation is from Him. No other name, no other person am I waiting on. I'm waiting on the Lord. That boss who thinks he's the one giving me the promotion is coming from God. The Bible says promotion comes from the Lord. But God will use that boss to bring promotion. Glory to God. You're waiting on the Lord? Wait patiently for Him. And He will come through for you. Father, bless your people tonight. Bless those that are watching, Lord, on social media. Bless those that are watching on the website. How are they seeing this, Lord? Bless the people here in this building, Lord. Those that are waiting, those that will say, Pastor, I'm in a waiting season. Help us to wait well on you. Lord, if frustration tries to come, help us to cast it down. When negative words try to come, like, it's never going to happen. Help us to rebuke those words. When a feeling of helplessness tries to come over us, let the first words come out of our mouth, my help comes from the Lord. Help us to wait well. Those people come speaking negative words. You've been waiting on God a long time to save your children, and they ain't saved yet. Lord, help us to stop our ears to that. And say, the Lord said, not only me, but my whole household. I'm waiting on the manifestation. God is working behind the scene. God has ministered spirit, ministering to my children right now, speaking life to them right now, and they will turn. I have no doubt. 
Help me to wait well on the salvation of my whole family. Help me to wait well on that career that I'm waiting on. Help me to wait well, Lord, on my healing in my physical body. Because by your stripes I'm already healed. But help me to wait on the manifestation. Help me to wait well on my relationship to turn. Help me to wait well, God. You fill in the blank. Whatever you're waiting on God for, you fill in the blank and ask God to help you wait well while you're waiting. And he will strengthen thy heart. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, you see your people, you see the hands raised, you see the hearts lifted, you see it, Lord. Touch right now. Yes. As we wait on you. We're waiting on you, Lord, because you've commanded us through your word. And in this waiting season, we will wait in this season until the next season comes. But while we're in this season, we're going to wait in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Listen, Saturday morning from 10 to 11, we have corporate prayer. Everybody's invited, but the leaders are strongly encouraged to attend. If you're not working, we're looking for you to be here. Saturday morning prayer from 10 to 11. Jesus said, could you not pray one hour? Amen. 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 God bless you. We are dismissed. Oh, wait a minute. Someone has suggested, we're going to do this at another time. Someone suggested after my teaching, those that may have questions, we're going to open up a question and answer session. Uh, then about 10 minutes after church, uh, or after my message, if there's a question and answer, we're going to start that. So if you have any questions or answers uh, during the message, write them down, and then ask them when I'm done, okay? Amen. And I'll see if I can find an answer for you. We'll Google it. <laughs>